Then it goes on to say, uh, on the occasion of the renewal of your marriage vows with your beloved wife, this is now there, and this is there again, you are a true testimony to the belief that spouses resolve to stick with each other, through thick and thin, great things can happen. I wish the two of you the very best in this long journey, and pray that God continues to bless this union, and if you will with digital wisdom and the patience that comes with marriage and family life. Ongera Kakangu. And below there, there is the photograph where a gift is being given by the Honorable Mr. King, Senator, to the couple of Judge Brima and I believe his spouse. It is, that is the annexure that was put by the petitioners in proof of the fact that there is a close relationship, a close friendship that under the law ought to have been disclosed given that Kingi is a very important party for purposes of the case against the Senate that debauched everything and has come here to defend those impeachment proceedings. I believe my job is done and uh, because that is all that it says. And that is the affidavit of the petitioners. Unless uh, they need me to read something else, no, what? I can sit down. The second applicant. Uh, may it please you, my lords, my lady. You are in another file. Eh? No, you can't. Or we take it in another file or the same file. Yes, my lady. It's only the same thing. Yes. I am in 509, where we have the application. 509 is in 1. Uh, your Lordship, with profound respect, permit me, Your Lordship, to indicate that we are arguing the application dated the 22nd of October. With a further affidavit, Your Lordship, having been filed this afternoon through the court's email. And Your Lordship, from the onset, it's with heavy heart, Your Lordship, that we have to move you through these mechanisms. And that, Your Lordship, my submissions are the submissions of my client, and that I'm just a vessel for putting a across my client's case. Your Lordship, there is a notice of motion that seeks the recusal of this bench. The same Your Lordship is supported with an affidavit and an annexure. Equally, the further affidavit is supported by two annexures. In my submissions, Your Lordship, I will heavily rely on the facts contained therein. What's the date of your application? The 22nd of October, your Lordship, my lady. I'll begin by indicating and relying on the Judicial Service Code of Conduct and Ethics Regulation 2020. And I drew the attention of the court to Regulation 47. Regulation 47, Your Lordship, states that a judicial officer may recuse himself or herself in any proceedings in which his or her impartiality might reasonably be questioned, where the judicial officer, one, is a part of the proceedings, B, was or is a material witness in the matter in controversy, C, has personal knowledge of disputed uh, evidentiary facts <laughs> concerning the proceedings, D, has actual bias or prejudice concerning a party. E, has personal interest or is in relationship with a person who has a personal interest in the outcome of the matter. F, 
has previously acted as, as counsel for a party in the same proceedings. G is precluded from hearing the matter. H, a member of the digital officer family, has economic or other interest in the outcome of the matter in question. A recusal by a judicial officer shall be based on specific grounds to be recorded in writing as part of the proceedings. Your Lordship, it is my client's, the petitioner's case, that this bench should recuse itself on the ground contained therein. Permit me to begin by indicating that yesterday when the court was delivering its ruling, it indicated actual bias on the part of the parties before you, Your Lordship. The petitioners were condemned in a wholesale, in disparaging language coming from the bench, a language that indicated prejudice or bias on the part of the petitioners. It was indicated by the, the bench, Your Lordship, that despite the heavy submissions the authorities that we quoted, we quoted, we were not addressing the bench, but addressing the gallery. It is so prejudiced, Your Lordship, that such perception on the part of the petitioners culminated into the court not even taking note of most crucial issues that we had submitted on. For example, despite the, 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 the appeal that is now being launched, the court failed to take into not, uh, in, uh, notice of the question of delegated authority. It is a considered submission, Your Lordship, that had it not been for the bias and the prejudice that the court has on the part of the petitioners, such would not have escaped the mind of the court. Your Lordship, further, the court made further remarks that they take great exceptions with the remarks of the petitioners. When the court indicates that they take great exceptions with the remarks of the petitioners, it's a prima facie indication that the court has descended, descended into the arena of dispute and that the court therefore becomes or takes a defensive approach in the manner in which the prosecution of the case is being conducted. Your Lordship, a judge must at all particular time be a solemn person, slow to anger, and of good temperaments. Your Lordship, the statement indicates that the court has taken a position as against the respondents, the, the petitioners. And the position is prejudicial to the petitioners and erodes their confidence to continue appearing and making submissions before this court. It was the observation of this honorable court, your lordships, that my client indicates that the court made further findings that the petitioners were not pursuing the urgency of the applications. What a reasonable man, a bystander, a fair-minded person, listening to these statements, internalizing them, will come to a conclusion that the court has taken a hard position on or against the petitioners. The test of a fair-minded person, your lordship. Uh, my lord, we really need to intervene, but my colleague, if he is had time for it, it's okay. But let him tell you how yes, the ruling you issue will be a basis for an application that was filed long before that ruling. Your Lordship, if he may be patient, he'll have the, his chance to bite the cherry and respond in that manner he so thinks that he should. 
Your Lordship, the application has also indicated that Justice E. Ogola is closely associated with his spouse who serves in the Water Kenya Towers Agency. The affirmance of our clients, Your Lordship, is that this is a matter that ought to have been disclosed at the inception of the proceedings. Let, let, me, let, me, let me get you right. You, you mean the judge is closely associated with the wife? <laughs> <laughs> that is not my statement. Yes, well, what is it that you said? Repeat for the record. May I repeat for the record? So that the court may not again misquote me. Proceed. Your Lordship, the spouse of his Lordship, one Florence Oluoch Auma. If you depend to that issue, yes, there's a disposition to that. Yeah, there is a disposition to that, that issue. Lordship. That Florence is the wife. Yes, there is. Paragraph. Yes, paragraph. Paragraph 13 of the supporting affidavit, as read with paragraph 11 of the father affidavit, she holds a position in the Kenya Water Towers Agency, an appointment that was done pursuant to the Gazette notice, numbers. 7515 of 2013 for and on behalf of the presidency by Siopan Tuya. Your Lordship, it may be, it may go on record that the six respondent who initiated or made this appointment is a party in these proceedings and that the parties no, my Lord, that's I'm not, not factually I'm not, correct. I'm not, I'm not getting you right, and I'm sorry for intervention. Where are you lost, my Lord? Here. Uh, if I'm looking at the same document as you, yes. the Gazette Notice 7515 was issued on the 7th day of June 2023 by Soipan Tunya. That's correct. Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change, and Forestry. That's correct. The sixth respondent in this proceeding is who? He's the, dep he's the president. Then, where is the next I, I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Your Lordship, <coughs> the cabinet under the constitution is constituted of the president, and the cabinet secretaries appointed there rather, and the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. That Siopan Tuya is an agent of the presidency. Your Lordship, one of the issues that was before the impeachment was that the deputy president, the petitioner here, really indicated that Kenya is a shareholding country. There are shareholding agreements before you, and that Positions either in parastatals or corporations were to be shared in accordance to that share agreement. Lord, that, that is the reason why his client got impeached. <laughs> that is not that is not anything that is before you for determination. That is the reason he got impeached. To be given an opportunity to respond. Even if you are itching, Mr. Nyamond, take your call. Your Lordship. It is my client's submissions that Florence Auma Oluoch may have been a beneficiary of that shareholding. Your Lordship, Sorry. finally, Your Lordship, Kindly, just we you have finally, uh, just a minute. It is extremely unfair and unjust, especially for an advocate to mislead or what you have seen to play to the gallery. Can you read paragraph? 12 of the affidavit. So that he, does, he does. No, 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 no. Yes. Let's hear it from him. Where he says that the state board is chaired by the president who has 
I'm sorry, I'm not asking. Excuse me. Uh, 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 no, excuse me. No, 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 no. Your honours, your, la your ladyship and my lords, they will have time, as you said, to respond and say all these things. If he's saying nonsense, they'll stand up and say so. But this constant interruption is intended to derail this hearing. Let them respond when their time comes. Yes. And Stop bullying people. And we have heard the condescending nature of the respondents. Yeah. Everybody here has been instructed by a client either to speak sense or nonsense. <laughs> so that being the case, the condescending attitude is completely objectionable. And everybody should take their seat and use their time with the sense. If sense can only come from them, they do it during their time. Thank you very much. Sir, can I finish? Can I finish? But my Lord, I may I be protected to add my application and the respondents be granted yeah, the to respond. Let me finish what I was saying. You will have your time. I know I will have my respond. time. But please, this is the application being presented. Let's not have other things. It has been served upon you. You will respond. Just one thing. Just one thing. Order. Can we can we have some order? Can we please have some order? Have you have you may proceed? Sandegua, uh, use your remaining of your remaining time to conclude. Well, I am most obliged, Lordship. It may be noted that, Mr. Uh, your Lordship, that the chair of this board is directly appointed by the president, the six, the six respondents in this case. Your Lordship, may I submit again that the perception out there is that this bench has been constituted for a particular purpose. And that the bench is just a mere conveyor belt, and that the parties herein will not have the chances to have justice of their case being dispensed. Your Lordship, I have annexed a tweet by Senior Counsel Ahmed Nasir, annexed in our affidavit at paragraph 12, and I would wish to read that tweet, Your Lordship. Arhame Nasir, your lordship, is a senior member of this bar, a senior counsel. And your lordship, here it goes. The conservatory orders will be discharged by the three-judge bench, latest by next week, if not by Friday. Even as we approach you, your lordship, the perception out there is that this bench is part of the conspiracy? Uh, my Lord, may I object to that? Ahmed Nasir is not the law. Your Lordship. He speaks not to the law. Ahmed Nasir has also an affidavit. of it. He is not a witness, my Lord. How does Ahmed Nasir, and we have 64 senior counsel, how does Ahmed Nasir, how can his tweet inform submission before this court? May I answer that, Your Lordship, to the good professor, that we are speaking about perception. The standard of a bystander, the reasonable man, a fair-minded man in the status and the character of a senior counsel, Ahmed Nasir says, and the president's lawyer says, we cannot receive justice. 
My Lord, Ahmed Dasir says, Ahmed Dasir says that this court will quash the impeachment of Rigabi. No, but the point is, he then speaks in your favor. Pick that line. Let him respond. You will not teach me how to submit. You will pick the line that you so wish. For me, I am saying, Your Lordship, that the perception out there is that this bench has been constituted to, as a conveyor belt. Finally, Your Lordship, this court will remember that on the 16th of October, we moved the court for a mention on the 18th. The court declined to grant that mention and slated our file to be mentioned on the 28th, 29th of October. But they were, when they were moved by parties in these proceedings, the court was generous and gracious enough even to sit on a weekend, to sit on a Saturday. Noting that we were before you, you selected our matter for, 20, for the 29th, and never saw the urgency. Your Lordship, how can a fair bystander be convinced that this court will dispense with substantive justice. How can it be said that this court is impartial? Your Lordship, the question of a spouse being linked to a, a judge, as indicated by